Good morning, everybody. Uh, you know, this morning was very interesting uh, for me, and uh, what I've seen that uh, we are in an exciting time for shipping. I'm a, I'm a naval architect, marine engineer. I think uh, I talk to myself, there is no better time to be in this business. A lot of uh, transformation, a lot of new technology, and uh, shipping is going to change. And uh, I'm working for WinGD. We do low-speed engines. Uh, probably low-speed engines, you know, is questionable. Will, will remain as technology? This is a question that we have uh, quite often in our company. And, uh, but you know, today the fact is that the low speed engines basically power all the merchant ship. Merchant ship uh, container, tanker, bar carrier are powered by low speed engines. It's a machine that has more than 100 years. There have been a lot of evolution, but still uh, is the most efficient machine. Uh, in uh, available and uh, is the preferred choice also for uh, for uh, the new build that will last 20 30 years so but um, what i want to say is um, uh, what i think in the future the digitalization will play an important role and uh, we are investing in such a kind of technology because uh, I was uh, really agreed with the, the, the Armes, Mr. Armes presentation from ABS, where the, he presented a platform where basically the OEMs should contribute with data and to have a sort of smart ships. And actually, this is the direction we want to go, and uh, what I'm going to introduce in the next slide. So first of all, you know, we need to define what is a digitalization, because uh, are different means. Uh, for us, in, in our uh, small uh, way, in small contribution, small big contribution in the way we give to the business, um, digitalization means engine data, ship data, and we want to create value from this data. Now, for us, we, we design the engines, the main engine, basically, the, the focus is supporting our customers. And the digitalization we see, in a way, is our path to better support the customer. So this is a, what is a, the, our first, because this is the first digitalization step we are doing to, to do. By the way, digitalization is a must. Is a, there is no barrier, actually, because non-digitalized means, means basically to die, it means be actually obsolete quite soon. So that's why we start to collect the data, col collect the engine data. You know, it sounds strange, but uh, um, all the engine data are not really collected nowadays. Only few of them are collected by our monitoring system. We have uh, much more data that we want to collect. Why we want to collect this data? Because we collect the data, collecting data is an important step, but we need to analyze the data. We want to analyze the data to create valuable information. We want to predict malfunction. We want to analyze the engine performance. So in this way, we are able to support our customer. Because in case of issue, in case of um, malfunction, in case of uh, no proper operation, we can intervene. We can see the data. Uh, uh, we can see the operation of the engine in real time. That's for us is the part of the transparency we discuss, at least for the engine operation. That's why we created uh, a product uh, that we call WIDE, uh, WinGD Integrated Digital Expert, that is composed by DCM, Data Collection Monitoring. By the way, you say you want a revolution. Uh, it is not a revolution, it's an evolution. But uh, we, we decide to have a standard, so including the scope of supply of our engine, and data collection. This is uh, an important step because, you know, together with the engine, we deliver all the data. We deliver the data in internet, already including the scope of supply of the engine. This is uh, an important evolution. So we created then software together with the propulsion analytics that is going to, to present today uh, to diagnostic the engine, to predict malfunction, to uh, facilitate the logistics per part, the, the engine operation, and then a remote support to be in contact with the ship, you know, to the crew in operations and to the ship superintendent during the operation. Uh, just a few words about uh, uh, our system. So we have a system on board to collect all the data and to analyze the, all uh, the data. We do edge computing. Uh, on the bo why on board? Because on board we treat a huge amount of data and we can analyze with the high sophistication. But uh, then, uh, you know, in the shipping still is a problem, the connectivity. So we transfer the result of the analysis of some raw data that uh, are important to store in the server. And in our server, basically, the customer have access to all the data, to the result of the analysis. 
WinGD, we have access, our engineer access, to provide remote support, third party have access. Basically, this module is a plug and play to a smart ship on a solution like the one discussed and proposed by ABS before, or other class societies. So basically, we already create a smart engine that is already future-proof to be integrated in digitalization. So we want to be part of the digitalization step. Uh, basically, just to simplify, what is digitalization for us? It's a, court, a sort of deal we do with, our, uh, with the shipping company. Shipping company give us data, because in, in, uh, the data belong to the shipping company, even though our data generated by the engine, and we, give bad, uh, we need to give back a high engine availability, better support, predictive maintenance, troubleshooting, and, uh, and um, basically, the way I see sort of uh, advanced customer relationship. So data collection is the first step, but uh, collecting data is essential, but uh, don't solve so much. We need to analyze the data. So we have created the NGNOC system in collaboration with the Propulsion Analytics that is going to be presented now. <laughs> Thank you. Good, uh, good afternoon from my side as well. My name is Panos Theodosopoulos from Propulsion Analytics. Um, our company is focusing on performance management products and services, and we're happy and proud to be cooperating with uh, WinGD in that project of theirs to digitalize their engines, so to speak. So the concept here is that um, practically EDS is the digital copy of the physical engine. You can, you can think of it in such a way. That's what more or less we call the digital twin. I know there's a lot of digital twins going around in the industry, and I say that in a positive way. Um, but for us, it's, it's practically what we're trying to do Collectively, I mean, when I say we, I use the collective term for WinGD and us. Uh, what we're trying to do is to, to have a digital copy on board which will help assess the performance of the physical entity. So um, that's what the, the concept is all about. So um, the parts of the solution, if you like, uh, are the physical engine itself. There are signals connected, sensors and, and signals coming out of the physical engine, part of the installation, as uh, Carmelo said. Uh, these are fed to the digital twin, and through the analysis, we can actually support the crew on board to, uh, for troubleshooting, uh, maintenance, spare parts, etc., etc. So, uh, if this is more or less the, the, at high level the parts of the component. So, let's dive in a little bit and look at the uh, at the various steps. The first step of the analysis. Uh, the first step is the analysis phase, so we get the signals and we have to analyze them. This is, we're talking about a, a, a data set every one minute, so we get uh, a data set, both slow signals, slow frequency signals, as well as high frequency signals, so in-cylinder pressure measurements as well. Uh, and we go through three stages of analysis, uh, depending on the case. Thermodynamic analysis, engine subcomponent diagnostics based on expert know-how, and, and last but not least, machine learning were, were applicable. Let's look at uh, each one of them uh, in, a, in a little uh, more uh, detail. So the thermodynamic analysis allows us to create practically um, uh, the digital grid of the engine, which would, would serve uh, aside, uh, you know, next next to the physical engine, and based on the differences between the operation of the phys physical engine and what the digital uh, copy dictates, we can start analyzing and seeing differences. So first, we create the model of each engine. This is fine-tuned and customized for each onboard installation separately. So it's not the physical twin of any engine, but it's for each particular engine based on its shop tests. Um, we then run uh, ahead, uh, ahead of time, before we install on board, a number of simulations to capture the behavior of the engine across its operating envelope for any sort of load, RPM, or ambient conditions, uh, which gives us a hypermap of, of operation, a multidimensional hypermap of the operation of the engine. Uh, and that allows us on board to assess, as I said, the performance of the engine. We start seeing some uh, screenshots of the actual uh, software that we, uh, we, we are now deploying on board. So uh, assessing the performance, uh, going into the level of, of detail of seeing individual elements, pressures, uh, in-cylinder pressure assessments and things like that. 
uh, and that more or less is, is, is the first part of the analysis. The second part of the analysis is uh, what we call component diagnostics. So here, the, if you like, in-house expertise of WinGD through documentation and a set of interviews that we've done with their experts um, is actually documented, if you like, in a set of rule sets, diagnostic rule sets, that reflects the correct behavior of, uh, of subsystems and, and components. So uh, we know from the experts that if, uh, and if this, then that sort of story, a deterministic way of actually uh, being able to predict if, if something is going wrong. Um, we've broken down the engine into various subsystems. You see uh, some of them here, servo oil, fuel injection, uh, scavenger, and exhaust system, etc. So uh, for each individual system, we have applied rules and we have developed algorithms to be able to detect. That's an additional uh, level of analysis on top of, uh, on top of uh, the thermodynamic approach. Uh, that allows us to look at details. So this is uh, the exhaust gas and uh, air, air, air scavenge system. Uh, as an example, or this is, I think, is the fuel injection system. And once an issue is detected, is actually, it is actually uh, giving an alarm or on the on, on the onboard screen to the crew, and the crew can can dive in and look at details. And, and finally, uh, we are also using machine learning uh, algorithms uh, where we start collecting operational data in order to be able to train. Uh, and detect uh, anomalies based on, on simply the data themselves and the behavior of, of the components. So this in, in typically involves two steps. I know I'm exceeding my time, but we are two speakers in one, so I would uh, thank you very much for, for allowing us a bit of extra time. So the step number one is to use historical data to train the algorithms, and then once you do that, you can apply them on board to, to, to uh, actually detect anomalies. Here is an example of, uh, we, we use the liner wall temperature data in order to detect normal operation versus uh, high friction operation. And that allows us then on board, if something goes uh, based on that machine learning algorithm, if something goes wrong, to, de to detect uh, issues like piston scaffing, et cetera. So that's the third level of, uh, of analysis. So once you've done that all, the, all, all that, so you have thermodynamic analysis, expert know-how based, and then machine learning, you've got to consolidate the, the outcomes. So we have a module that sort of merges um, uh, the, the outcome of the various analysis uh, processes and uh, consolidates the findings, which in turn uh, is fed to the orchestrator for the actions to follow, troubleshooting, maintenance, tasks, events, and spare part uh, configuration, which is at the end of the day the value to the onboard crew. So. Troubleshooting is more or less what you expect. It provides a list of possible possible causes based on the findings. As I said, every one minute uh, the system is assessing. Um, and it presents a set of corrective actions to the onboard crew through digital uh, access to the uh, operation manuals and maintenance manuals. Uh, maintenance, uh, we, we tr we're trying to go beyond uh, current practices and, and plan maintenance. So practically uh, at the moment the standard is that overhauling and maintenance events are actually um, based on running hours. We're going, we're extending that based on the uh, a a condition of the asset, so, uh, and the usage of the, of the asset and the current status, and that allows us to be able to um, uh, give the operator uh, the opportunity to decide, if you like, um, an additional aid to help him decide, extend, or, or advance overhauling of components and maintenance events. Uh, here you see a typical uh, screen of the uh, maintenance process, which also gives access, as I said, to the digital um, uh, manuals for specific steps to be to be followed. Uh, and last but not least, obviously, to, loop, to close the loop, spare parts is uh, part of the process to, to close the, as I said, the loop. Uh, and automatic creation of the spare parts needed for each maintenance task is, is uh, following the, 
uh, the, the, the process of steps. So to wrap up from uh, more or less where I started and give back the, uh, um, the floor to Carmelo to close, um, as I said, we're starting from the physical engine, getting signals and uh, se sensor measurements from the physical engine, and through the digital twin, we'll be able to analyze and pro proceed to actions for the onboard crew to, to support them. So thank you for your time, Carmelo. I guess the next slide is yours. The, to, to summarize, what are the value we want to create? We want to, with our uh, digital solution, connected with our engine, we want to help to save full cost, still our focus as an uh, engine designer, efficiency, and digitalization, we have seen that help a lot. Full access to all engine data, so the, the engine data is a value. Uh, engine failure prediction, we want to change, we want to predict the way uh, the, the failure. And uh, advanced troubleshooting, we want to change the way troubleshooting is done today with uh, email or, or, or screenshot. We want direct access to the crew, to the engine, to the data. Uh, we want to give access to the spare part very easily, actually to the ship owner that can easily order spare part. And we want to have a dynamic maintenance plan based on the condition of the machine. So that's it. Thank you so much.